Welcome back to NCCP Anywhere for this third weekend in July. I'm Dave Stawick, visiting homeless. Greetings to you today, once again, from what I call the NCCP South Annex on Capitol Hill, low from your nation's capital. This is a special month in a lot of ways for us here at North Carroll Cooperative Parish. A big reason for that is that we're well into our summer camps where we serve our kids from our congregations and also we welcome lots of children from the broader community in Carroll and Baltimore counties. Last week was Field and Stream Camp. I heard that that went off very well. Uh, everything from uh, axe throwing to fishing uh, to making hummingbird feeders, I understand. So lots of different activities. It was a good week. Next week, sports camp, and that will be at Greenmount Church. Now, another reason that July is special is that we are using in our worship, both in our congregations at the churches and here online, the same biblical lessons that we're using with the kids in our camps. So there's a real strong chord between young and mature in our congregations uh, at camp time. And finally, July is really great this year because our topic involves some of the letters of St. Paul to the earliest Christian congregations in the ancient Near East and elsewhere as the church expanded exponentially in those decades after the time of Pentecost. So today's excerpt is from St. Paul's letter to the Galatians in the fifth chapter. Paul wrote, I say, be guided by the spirit and you won't carry out your selfish desires. A person's selfish desires are set against the spirit and the spirit is set against one's selfish desires. They are opposed to each other. And so you shouldn't do whatever you want to do. But if you're being led by the spirit, you aren't under the law. The actions that are produced by selfish motives are obvious, since they include sexual immorality, moral corruption, doing whatever feels good, idolatry, drug use, and casting spells, hate, fighting, obsession, losing your temper, competitive opposition, conflict, selfishness, group rivalry, jealousy, drunkenness, partying, and other things like that. I warn you, as I have already warned you, that those who do these kinds of things won't inherit God's kingdom. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against things like this. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have sacrificed the self with its passions and its desires. If we live by the Spirit, let's follow the Spirit. Let's not become arrogant, make each other angry, or be jealous of one another. The word of God for the people of God, thanks be to God. Well, I start today's message with you with an expression that Paul used in many of his letters, and that is grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our series title for this month is Signed, Sealed, and delivered. And if you are like me of a certain age, you might think that was about an old Stevie Wonder song. Well, it's also signed, sealed, and delivered as in a letter signed by the writer, affixed with his wax seal and delivered to the addressee. In this case, this month, it's about Paul's letters to the early churches which are true treasures of the Christian faith, memorialized in our Bible in the New Testament, following the Gospels and the story of the Acts of the Apostles. Romans, Corinthians, Thessalonians, Ephesians, Philemon, etc. These are Paul's missives, almost as if he were a bishop of the early Christian communities 
that he felt called to minister to. Now, these letters, also sometimes called epistles, it's a word that derives from a Greek term, these letters were Paul's writings to the early churches, and they were very particularly targeted to the early Christian congregations. He wasn't just bloviating uh, or opining in general. No, he knew from his sources about what was going on in each of these communities, and he sought to address them in his writings. For example, the letter to the Romans uh, carries a very great understanding of the persecution that they were under, uh, trying to practice Christianity right in the uh, capital of the Roman Empire, et cetera, et cetera. So a little background about this letter we consider today, Galatians. It was written in the late 40s AD, and it is believed to be one of Paul's earliest writings. It addresses the churches in the region of Galatia, and he is combating false teachings and, frankly, Jewish legalisms and emphasizing salvation by faith alone, and that is faith in Jesus Christ. The setup is that the Gentile Galatians were struggling because the Jewish Christians in the community were insisting that they follow the Hebrew law that the, the Gentiles do. And Paul stresses the primacy of not the law, but the cross and Jesus saving work on it, the essence of Christianity. Now, after his greeting that I used to begin this sermon, uh, the greeting that he uses in many of his letters to the churches, Paul switches gears and he very quickly gets down to the business at hand. And he wrote very forcefully with an admonition in the first chapter. So this is before our reading for today. But Paul said in the first chapter to the Galatians, I'm amazed that you are so quickly deserting the one who called you by the grace of Christ to follow another gospel. I am amazed. Paul is telling them to get their act together. Focus on who you are following. The dating of this letter is earlier than we believe most or all of the Gospels. And this is a testimony to one thing that was very evident in Paul's writings. And that those are some things that we're trying to bring up this month. Some themes or mannerisms of Paul. And one of these things that Paul really stresses is the working of the Holy Spirit, the working of the Spirit. Indeed, Paul must have been strongly inspired by the Spirit, because if you think about it in the timeline, he simply he was not one of Jesus' disciples. He didn't know Jesus in Jesus' earthly life. He didn't spend the three years that uh, Jesus was ministering after his baptism and before his death. So this man who was originally named Saul, you may remember, didn't meet Jesus until after Jesus' death and resurrection and ascension into heaven, when they had that little dust up on the road to Damascus, and Jesus said, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? And Jesus turned him from a persecutor of Christians to a great apostle and explainer of the Gospels, Jesus' good news, and gave him a new name of Paul. Now, it's important to make, take note here in this look at the letter to the Galatians that Paul had been, as you may know, but Paul had been in his earlier life a very zealous Jew, a follower of the Hebrew traditions, and even a persecutor of early Christians. But after his encounter with Jesus, he shook off his past and the legalisms, and he concentrated on the teachings of Jesus Christ. And he was evidently quite aware of the inspiration of the Holy Spirit in his life and even in the life of the early Christian church as it expanded. Indeed, Paul invokes the Spirit very powerfully in today's reading, saying to the Galatians at the very beginning of our excerpt, be guided by the Spirit. He was saying, don't be slaves to your former teachings, telling the Jewish Galatians not to impose the Hebrew law that they were familiar with and they were brought up under. Don't impose it on their Gentile brothers and sisters but rather 
all follow the good news of Jesus. He was essentially saying, keep your eye on the ball. Paul himself was guided by the Spirit to have a deep understanding of the very essence of Christianity, as I said. And that comes through over and over in his letters to the various Christian communities. He simply must have had a great external supernatural inspiration to have the understanding he did since he was not an early disciple. So Paul was a tremendous early theologian, theologian, a one who passes on the knowledge of God. Paul was an explainer. And one of the techniques he used often to explain the teaching and examples of Jesus in his letters was to make lists. Paul loved lists. By trade, Paul was a tent maker. In his ministry, often he was a list maker. And we see a great example of this in our reading today from the letter to the Galatians. Our section title for today, uh, in case you didn't notice it, is Two Different Ways of Living. And Paul, Paul goes about his task of explanation of those two ways by making lists. The first is a list of what I'll call the don'ts. Paul says, don't engage in, I'm just going to repeat them now, don't engage in sexual immorality, moral corruption, doing whatever feels good, idolatry, drug use, casting spells, hate, fighting, obsession, losing your temper, competitive opposition, conflict, selfishness, group rivalry, jealousy, drunkenness, partying, and other things like that. End of quote. A lot of don'ts. All these are, all these are things that we see sometimes in, in some places today. So Paul's letter is kind of like advice to students going off to college in the fall in the, 20, the 21st century. Or maybe people coming here to Washington, D.C. to serve in Congress. Again, Paul's letters speak to us today through the centuries. Well, the list of the don'ts is probably pretty obvious, but it is also probably a good thing to hear once in a while. Paul thought it was relevant for the Galatians, and it is relevant for us today. And he said, people who do these things won't inherit God's kingdom. Forcefully enough. Now, Paul's lists were usually counterbalancing in his letters. He didn't just list bad things. He also listed good things that were sometimes antidotes. And so it is here in the letter to the Galatians. Because Paul includes in our excerpt for today a list of do's. Paul says, do exhibit love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. These are the parts of the other way of living mentioned in the section heading. Back to Paul's understand and experience of the workings of the Holy Spirit. He says the things in the list of the do's are the fruit of the Spirit. And in verse 24, he emphasizes those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the self with its passions and desires. Now, you may have noticed, there are a lot more don'ts than do's on Paul's lists. And that may in and of itself, and it strikes me as being indicative of the power of the Holy Spirit. The positive do's are almost twice as long as the list, or I'm sorry, the don'ts uh, are almost twice as long as the list of the do's. So the Spirit can overcome the bad things with the good things that Paul outlines. Finally, one other part of the nature of Paul in his letters is to make a logical case and reach a summation. Remember, he was writing to people who may not have had the spirit insight that he was blessed with, probably didn't. And as a matter of fact, some of them, especially from pagan or Gentile backgrounds, just 
didn't have any particular focus of religion, certainly not as focused as the Hebrew people did. So he uh, tried to use logic with them. He was not only an anointed theologian, but he was also a great rhetorician, easy for me to say, a great rhetorician, an explainer. And he wraps things up for us here in our reading with a conclusion, a closing argument of his case, as a lawyer might do in a courtroom. Verse 26, he says, let's not become arrogant, make each other angry, or be jealous of each other. It's almost like a final list for this letter. Pretty good advice. Our first reading of the series from the letter to the Ephesians that you may recall from a couple weeks ago struck me as being sort of like Paul's mini creed, like those that we use, the Apostles' Creed or the Nicene Creed. Um, And in that uh, letter to the Ephesians, Paul is discussing the workings of all three members of the Holy Trinity. In a similar fashion today, Paul concludes with what we might consider his version of the golden rule, which we kind of think of uh, as being in the secular realm, and uh, indeed it is in the secular realm, but the golden rule is right from the mouth of Jesus in the Gospel of Matthew, the seventh chapter, the Lord said, in everything do to others what you would have them do to you. So sound advice, succinctly relevant today, Paul saying, let's not become arrogant, make each other angry, or be jealous of each other. You might say golden rule version 2.023. What a gift Paul's pastoral letters were to the early churches and timeless gifts gifts of the Holy Spirit, if you will, for us today. They are not mere echoes of past teachings. They come through loud and clear here and now. May we be worthy inheritors of his sound advice and treasure his letters. I'll leave you as I join you with Paul's gentle words of greeting. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Until we next meet. Amen.